ID Software LLC is an American video game developer based in Dallas, Texas. The company was founded on February 1, 1991, by four members of the computer company Softdisk, programmers John Carmack and John Romero, game designer Tom Hall, and artist Adrian Carmack no relation to John Carmack. Business manager Jay Wilbur was also involved. ID Software made important technological developments in video game technologies for the PC, running MS DOS and Windows, including work done for the Wolfenstein, Doom, and Quake franchises. ID's work was particularly important in 3D computer graphics technology and in game engines that are used throughout the video game industry. The company was involved in the creation of the first-person shooter FPS genre. Wolfenstein 3D is often considered as the first true FPS, Doom was a game that popularized the genre and PC gaming in general, and Quake was its first true 3D FPS. On June 24, 2009, Zenimix Media acquired the company. In 2015, they opened a second studio in Frankfurt, Germany. Topic: History. The founders of id Software met in the offices of Softdisk, developing multiple games for Softdisk's monthly publishing, including Dangerous Dave. In September 1990, John Carmack developed an efficient way to rapidly side-scroll graphics on the PC. Upon making this breakthrough, Carmack and Tom Hall stayed up late into the night making a replica of the first level of the popular 1988 NES game Super Mario Bros. 3, inserting stock graphics of John Romero's Dangerous Dave character in lieu of Mario. When Romero saw the demo, entitled, Dangerous Dave in copyright infringement. He realized that Carmack's breakthrough could have potential. The team that would later form id Software immediately began moonlighting, going so far as to borrow company computers that were not being used over the weekends and at nights while they designed their own remake of Super Mario Bros. 3. Despite their work, Nintendo turned them down, saying they had no interest in expanding to the PC market, and that Mario games were to remain exclusive to Nintendo consoles. Around this time, Scott Miller of Apogee Software learned of the group and their exceptional talent, having played one of Romero's softest games, Dangerous Dave, and contacted Romero under the guise of multiple fan letters that Romero came to realize all originated from the same address. When he confronted Miller, Miller explained that the deception was necessary since Softdisk screened letters it received. Although disappointed by not actually having received mail from multiple fans, Romero and other Softdisk developers began proposing ideas to Miller, including Commander Keen in December 1990, which became a very successful shareware game. After their first royalty check Romero, Carmack, and Adrian Carmack no relation decided to start their own company. After hiring Hall, the group finished the Commander Keen series, then hired Jay Wilbur and Kevin Cloud and began working on Wolfenstein 3D. The shareware distribution method was initially employed by id Software through Apogee Software to sell their products, such as the Commander Keen, Wolfenstein and Doom games. They would release the first part of their trilogy as shareware, then sell the other two installments by mail order. Only later, about the time of the release of Doom 2, did id Software release their games via more traditional shrink-wrapped boxes in stores through other game publishers. After Wolfenstein 3D's great success, id began working on Doom. After Hall left the company it hired Sandy Peterson and Dave Taylor before the release of Doom in December 1993. On June 24, 2009, it was announced that id Software had been acquired by Zenimix Media owner of Bethesda Softworks. The deal would eventually affect publishing deals id Software had before the acquisition, namely Rage, which was being published through Electronic Arts. id Software moved from the cube-shaped Mesquite office to a newly built location in Richardson, Texas in January 2011. 
On June 26, 2013, id Software President Todd Hollinshead quit after 17 years of service. On November 22, 2013, it was announced id Software co founder and technical director John Carmack had fully resigned from the company to work full time at Oculus VR, which he joined as CTO in August 2013. He was the last of the original founders to leave the company. Topic. Company name The company writes its name with a lowercase id, which is pronounced as in did or kid, and, according to the book Masters of Doom, the group identified itself as ideas from the deep in the early days of Softdisk but that, in the end, the name id came from the phrase in demand, disliking in demand as Lame. Someone suggested a connection with Sigmund Freud's psychological concept of id, which the others accepted. Evidence of the reference can be found as early as Wolfenstein 3D with the statement, That's id, as in the id, ego, and superego in the psyche, appearing in the game's documentation. Prior to an update to the website, id's history page made a direct reference to Freud. Topic. Key employees Kevin Cloud — Executive Producer, 1992–present Tim Willits — Studio Director, 1995–present Marty Stratton — Executive Producer, 1997–present Robert Duffy — Chief Technology Officer, 1998–present Donna Jackson Office Manager, 1994 present. Topic: Former key employees. Arranged in chronological order. John Carmack, Co-founder, Technical Director, 1991 to 2013. He joined Oculus VR on August 7, 2013, as a side project, but unable to handle two companies at the same time. Carmack resigned from id Software on November 22, 2013, to pursue Oculus full time, making him the last founding member to leave the company. Tom Hall co founder, game designer, level designer, writer, creative director. 1991 to 1993. After a dispute with John Carmack over the designs of Doom, Hall was forced to resign from id Software in August 1993. He joined 3D Realms soon afterwards. Bobby Prince — Music Composer 1991-1994. A freelance musician who went on to pursue other projects after Doom 2. Dave Taylor — Programmer, 1993–1994. Taylor left id Software and co-founded Crack.com. John Romero, co-founder, game designer, programmer, 1991–1996. Romero was fired from id Software on August 6, 1996, after the release of Quake for not performing. He established Ion Storm along with Hall on November 15, 1996. Sean Green — Software Support 1991-1996. Left id Software to join Romero at Ion Storm. Mike Wilson — PR and Marketing 1994-1997. Left id Software to become CEO of Ion Storm with Romero. Left a year later to found Gathering of Developers and later Devolver Digital. Michael Abrash — Programmer 1995-1996. Returned to Microsoft after the release of Quake. Jay Wilbur — Business Manager 1991-1997. Left id Software after Romero's departure and joined Epic Games in 1997. Sandy Peterson — Level designer, 1993 to 1997. Left id Software for Ensemble Studios in 1997. American McGee, 
Level Designer 1993 to 1998. American was fired after the release of Quake 2. He joined Electronic Arts and created American McGee's Alice. Adrian Carmack — Co-founder, artist 1991-2005. Adrian left id Software after the release of Doom 3 to further pursue his career in arts. It was later revealed he was fired due to legal issues over ownership and sued the company. The lawsuit was eventually dropped after the Zenimix media acquisition. Todd Hollinshead — President 1996-2013 left id Software on good terms to work at Nerve Software. <laughs> Game development Technology Starting with their first shareware game series, Commander Keen, id Software has licensed the core source code for the game, or what is more commonly known as the engine. Brainstormed by John Romero, id Software held a weekend session titled, The id Summer Seminar. In the summer of 1991 with prospective buyers including Scott Miller, George Broussard, Ken Rogoway, Jim Norwood and Todd Replogle. One of the nights, id Software put together an impromptu game known as, Whack Man, to demonstrate not only the technical prowess of the Keen engine, but also how it worked internally. Id Software has developed their own game engine for each of their titles when moving to the next technological milestone, including Commander Keen, Wolfenstein 3D, Shadowcaster, Doom, Quake, Quake 2, and Quake 3, as well as the technology used in making Doom 3. After being used first for Id Software's in-house game, the engines are licensed out to other developers. According to Eurogamer.net, id Software has been synonymous with PC game engines since the concept of a detached game engine was first popularized." During the mid to late 1990s, the launch of each successive round of technology it's been expected to occupy a headlining position, with the Quake 3 engine being most widely adopted of their engines. However id Tech 4 had far fewer licensees than the Unreal Engine from Epic Games, due to the long development time that went into Doom 3 which id Software had to release before licensing out that engine to others. In conjunction with his self-professed affinity for sharing source code, John Carmack has open-sourced most of the major id Software engines under the new general public license. Historically, the source code for each engine has been released once the code base is five years old. Consequently, many home-grown projects have sprung up porting the code to different platforms, cleaning up the source code, or providing major modifications to the core engine. Wolfenstein 3D, Doom and Quake engine ports are ubiquitous to nearly all platforms capable of running games, such as handheld PCs, iPods, the PSP, the Nintendo DS and more. Impressive core modifications include Dark Places which adds stencil shadow volumes into the original Quake engine along with a more efficient network protocol. Another such project is IOQuake 3, which maintains a goal of cleaning up the source code, adding features and fixing bugs. Even earlier id Software code, namely for Hovertank 3D and Catacomb 3D, was released in June 2014 by Flat Rock Software. The GPL release of the Quake 3 engine's source code was moved from the end of 2004 to August 2005 as the engine was still being licensed to commercial customers who would otherwise be concerned over the sudden loss in value of their recent investment. On August 4, 2011, John Carmack revealed during his QuakeCon 2011 keynote that they will be releasing the source code of the Doom 3 engine id Tech 4 during the year. ID Software publicly stated they would not support the Wii console possibly due to technical limitations, although they have since indicated that they may release titles on that platform although it would be limited to their games released during the 1990s, since id Software revealed their engine id Tech 5. 5, they call their engines, 
ID Tech, followed by a version number. Older engines have retroactively been renamed to fit this scheme, with the Doom engine as ID Tech 1. Topic: <laughs> Linux gaming. ID Software was an early pioneer in the Linux gaming market, and ID Software's Linux games have been some of the most popular of the platform. Many ID Software games won the Reader's and Editor's Choice Awards of Linux Journal. Some ID Software titles ported to Linux are Doom the first ID Software game to be ported, Quake, Quake 2, Quake 3 Arena, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein, Enemy Territory, Doom 3, Quake 4, and Enemy Territory, Quake Wars. Since id Software and some of its licensees released the source code for some of their previous games, several games which were not ported such as Wolfenstein 3D, Spear of Destiny, Heretic, Hexen, Hexen 2, and Strife can run on Linux and other operating systems natively through the use of source ports. Quake Live also launched with Linux support, although this, alongside OS X support, was later removed when changed to a standalone title. The tradition of porting to Linux was first started by Dave D. Taylor, with David Kirsch doing some later porting. Since Quake 3 Arena, Linux porting had been handled by Timothy Bessett. The majority of all id Tech 4 games, including those made by other developers, have a Linux client available, the only current exceptions being Wolfenstein and Brink. Similarly, almost all of the games utilizing the Quake 2 engine have Linux ports, the only exceptions being those created by Ion Storm. Despite fears by the Linux gaming community that id Tech 5 would not be ported to that platform, Timothy Bessett in his blog has stated, I'll be damned if we don't find the time to get Linux builds done." Bessett has stated that id Software's primary justification for releasing Linux builds is better code quality, along with a technical interest for the platform. However, on January 26, 2012, Bessett announced that he had left id. John Carmack has expressed his stance with regard to Linux builds in the past. In December 2000 Todd Hollinshead expressed support for Linux. All said, we will continue to be a leading supporter of the Linux platform because we believe it is a technically sound OS and is the OS of choice for many server ops. However, on April 25, 2012, Carmack revealed that, there are no plans for a native Linux client of id's most recent game, Rage. In February 2013, Carmack argued for improving emulation as the proper technical direction for gaming on Linux, though this was also due to Zenimix's refusal to support unofficial binaries, given all prior ports except for Quake 3 Arena, via Loki Software, and earlier versions of Quake Live having only ever been unofficial. Carmack didn't mention official games Quake, The Offering and Quake 2, Colossus ported by id Software to Linux and published by Macmillan Computer Publishing USA. <laughs> <laughs> games <laughs> Commander Keen The Commander Keen series, a platform game introducing one of the first smooth side-scrolling game engines for MS-DOS, brought id Software into the gaming mainstream. The game was very successful and spawned a whole series of titles. It was also the series of id Software that designer Tom Hall was most affiliated with. The first Commander Keen trilogy was released on December 14, 1990. Topic. Wolfenstein The company's breakout product was released on May 5, 1992, Wolfenstein 3D, a first-person shooter FPS with smooth 3D graphics that were unprecedented in computer games, and with violent gameplay that many gamers found engaging. 
After essentially founding an entire genre with this game, id Software created Doom, Doom 2, Hell on Earth, Quake, Quake 2, Quake 3 Arena, Quake 4, and Doom 3. Each of these first-person shooters featured progressively higher levels of graphical technology. Wolfenstein 3D spawned a prequel and a sequel, the prequel called Spear of Destiny, and the second, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, using the id Tech 3 engine. A third Wolfenstein sequel, simply titled Wolfenstein, was released by Raven Software, using the id Tech 4 engine. Another sequel, named Wolfenstein, The New Order, was developed using the id Tech 5 engine and released by Machine Games in 2014, with it getting a prequel by the name of Wolfenstein, The Old Blood a year later, followed by a direct sequel titled Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus in 2017. Topic. Doom. Eighteen months after their release of Wolfenstein 3D, on December 10, 1993, id Software released Doom which would again set new standards for graphic quality and graphic violence in computer gaming. Doom featured a sci-fi, horror setting with graphic quality that had never been seen on personal computers or even video game consoles. Doom became a cultural phenomenon and its violent theme would eventually launch a new wave of criticism decrying the dangers of violence in video games. Doom was ported to numerous platforms, inspired many knockoffs, and was eventually followed by the technically similar Doom 2, Hell on Earth. Id Software made its mark in video game history with the shareware release of Doom, and eventually revisited the theme of this game in 2004 with their release of Doom 3. John Carmack said in an interview at QuakeCon 2007 that there will be a Doom 4. It began development on May 7, 2008. Doom, the fourth installation and a reboot of the Doom series, was released on Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on May 13, 2016, and was later released on Nintendo Switch on November 10, 2017. In June 2018, the sequel to the 2016 reboot, Doom Eternal was officially announced at E3 2018 with a teaser trailer, followed by a gameplay reveal at QuakeCon in August 2018. Topic Quake On June 22, 1996, the release of Quake marked the second milestone in id Software history. Quake combined a cutting-edge fully 3D engine, the Quake engine, with a distinctive art style to create critically acclaimed graphics for its time. Audio was not neglected either, having recruited Nine Inch Nails frontman Trent Reznor to facilitate unique sound effects and ambient music for the game. A small homage was paid to Nine Inch Nails in the form of the band's logo appearing on the ammunition boxes for the Nile Gun weapon. It also included the work of Michael Abrash. Furthermore, Quake's main innovation, the capability to play a deathmatch competitive gameplay between living opponents instead of against computer-controlled characters over the internet especially through the add-on Quakeworld, seared the title into the minds of gamers as another smash hit. In 2008, id Software was honored at the 59th Annual Technology and Engineering Emmy Awards for the pioneering work Quake represented in user-modifiable games. id Software is the only game development company ever honored twice by the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, having been given an Emmy Award in 2007 for creation of the 3D technology that underlies modern shooter video games. The Quake series continued with Quake 2 in 1997. Activision purchased a 49% stake in id Software, making it a second party which took publishing duties until 2009. However, the game is not a storyline sequel, and instead focuses on an assault on an alien planet, Stragos, in retaliation for Strag attacks on Earth. Most of the subsequent entries in the Quake franchise follow this storyline. Quake 3 Arena 1999, the next title in the series, has minimal plot, but centers around the Arena Eternal, a gladiatorial setting created by an alien race known as the Vadrager and populated by combatants plucked from various points in time and space. 
Among these combatants are some characters either drawn from or based on those in Doom, Doom Guy, Quake, Ranger, Rack, and Quake 2, Bitterman, Tank Jr., Grunt, Stripe. Quake IV 2005 picks up where Quake 2 left off, finishing the war between the humans and Strog. The spin-off enemy territory, Quake Wars acts as a prequel to Quake 2, when the Strog first invade Earth. It should be noted that Quake IV and Enemy Territory, Quake Wars were made by outside developers and not id. There have also been a few other spin-off games such as Quake Mobile in 2005 and Quake Live, an internet browser-based modification of Quake 3. A game called Quake Arena DS was planned and cancelled for the Nintendo DS. John Carmack stated, at QuakeCon 2007, that the id Tech 5 engine would be used for a new Quake game. <inaudible> Rage Todd Hollinshead announced in May 2007 that id Software had begun working on an all-new series that would be using a new engine. Hollinshead also mentioned that the title would be completely developed in-house, marking the first game since 2004's Doom 3 to be done so. At 2007's WWDC, John Carmack showed the new engine called id Tech 5. Later that year, at QuakeCon 2007, the title of the new game was revealed as Rage. On July 14, 2008, id Software announced at the 2008 E3 event that they would be publishing Rage through Electronic Arts, and not id's longtime publisher Activision. However, since then Zenimix has also announced that they are publishing Rage through Bethesda Softworks. On August 12, 2010, during QuakeCon 2010, id Software announced Rage US ship date of September 13, 2011, and a European ship date of September 15, 2011. During the keynote, id Software also demonstrated a Rage spin-off title running on the iPhone. This technology demo later became Rage HD. On May 14, 2018, Bethesda Softworks announced Rage 2, a co-development between id Software and Avalanche Studios. Other games During its early days, id Software produced much more varied games, these include the early 3D first-person shooter experiments that led to Wolfenstein 3D and Doom, Hovertank 3D and Catacomb 3D. There was also the Rescue Rover series, which had two games, Rescue Rover and Rescue Rover 2. Also there was John Romero's Dangerous Dave series, which included such notables as the tech demo in copyright infringement which led to the Commander Keen engine, and the decently popular Dangerous Dave in the Haunted Mansion. In the Haunted Mansion was powered by the same engine as the earlier id Software game Shadow Knights, which was one of the several games written by id Software to fulfill their contractual obligation to produce games for Softdisk, where the id Software founders had been employed. id Software has also overseen several games using its technology that were not made in one of their IPs such as Shadowcaster, early id Tech 1, Heretic, Hexen, Beyond Heretic, id Tech 1, Hexen 2, 2, Quake Engine, and Orcs and Elves, Doom RPG Engine. Other media id Software has also been associated with novels since the publication of the original Doom novels. This has been restarted from 2008 onward with Matthew J. Costellos, a story consultant for Doom 3 and now Rage, new Doom 3 novels, Worlds on Fire and Maelstrom. Id Software became involved in film development when they were in the production team of the film adaption of their Doom franchise in 2005. In August 2007, Todd Hollinshead stated at QuakeCon 2007 that a return to Castle Wolfenstein movie is in development which re-teams the Silent Hill writer-producer team, Roger Avery as writer and director and Samuel Hadida as producer. Controversy 
ID Software was the target of controversy over two of their most popular games, Doom and the earlier Wolfenstein 3D. Topic: Doom. Doom was notorious for its high levels of gore and occultism along with satanic imagery, which generated controversy from a broad range of groups. Yahoo Games listed it as one of the top 10 most controversial games of all time. The game again sparked controversy throughout a period of school shootings in the United States when it was found that Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, who committed the Columbine High School massacre in 1999, were avid players of the game. While planning for the massacre, Harris said that the killing would be like playing Doom and It'll be like the LA riots, the Oklahoma bombing, World War II, Vietnam, Duke Nukem and Doom all mixed together, and that his shotgun was straight out of the game. A rumor spread afterwards that Harris had designed a Doom level that looked like the high school, populated with representations of Harris classmates and teachers, and that Harris practiced for his role in the shootings by playing the level over and over. Although Harris did design Doom levels, none of them were based on Columbine High School. While Doom and other violent video games have been blamed for nationally covered school shootings, 2008 research featured by Greater Good Science Center shows that the two are not closely related. Harvard Medical School researchers Cheryl Olson and Lawrence Kuttner found that violent video games did not correlate to school shootings. The U.S. Secret Service and Department of Education analyzed 37 incidents of school violence and sought to develop a profile of school shooters. They discovered that the most common traits among shooters were that they were male and had histories of depression and attempted suicide. While many of the killers like the vast majority of young teenage boys did play video games, this study did not find a relationship between game play and school shootings. In fact, only one-eighth of the shooters showed any special interest in violent video games, far less than the number of shooters who seemed attracted to books and movies with violent content. <laughs> <laughs> Wolfenstein 3D As for Wolfenstein 3D, due to its use of Nazi symbols such as the swastika and the anthem of the Nazi party, Horst Wessel lied, as theme music, the PC version of the game was withdrawn from circulation in Germany in 1994, following a verdict by the Amskarikt München on January 25, 1994. Despite the fact that Nazis are portrayed as the enemy in Wolfenstein, the use of those symbols is a federal offense in Germany unless certain circumstances apply. Similarly, the Atari Jaguar version was confiscated following a verdict by the Amskarikt Berlin Tiergarten on December 7, 1994. Due to concerns from Nintendo of America, the Super NES version was modified to not include any swastikas or Nazi references. Furthermore, blood was replaced with sweat to make the game seem less violent, and the attack dogs in the game were replaced by giant mutant rats. Employees of id Software are quoted in the official Doom Player Guide about the reaction to Wolfenstein, claiming it to be ironic that it was morally acceptable to shoot people and rats, but not dogs. Two new weapons were added as well. The Super NES version was not as successful as the PC version. People. In 2003, the book Masters of Doom chronicled the development of id Software, concentrating on the personalities and interaction of John Carmack and John Romero. Below are the key people involved with id's success. <laughs> John Carmack Carmack's skill at 3D programming is widely recognized in the software industry and from its inception, he was its lead programmer. On August 7, 2013, he joined Oculus VR, a company developing virtual reality headsets, and left id Software on November 22, 2013. <laughs> 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 
Topic: John Romero. John Romero, who was forced to resign after the release of Quake, later formed the ill-fated company Ion Storm. There, he became infamous through the development of Daikatana, which was received negatively from reviewers and gamers alike upon release. Both Tom Hall and John Romero have reputations as designers and idea men who have helped shape some of the key PC gaming titles of the 1990s. Tom Hall Tom Hall was forced to resign by id Software during the early days of Doom development, but not before he had some impact, for example, he was responsible for the inclusion of teleporters in the game. He was let go before the shareware release of Doom and then went to work for Apogee, developing Rise of the Triad with the "...developers of incredible power." When he finished work on that game, he found he was not compatible with the Prey development team at Apogee, and therefore left to join his ex-id software compatriot John Romero at Ion Storm. Hall has frequently commented that if he could obtain the rights to Commander Keen, he would immediately develop another Keen title. <laughs> Sandy Peterson. Sandy Peterson was a level designer for 19 of the 27 levels in the original Doom title as well as 17 of the 32 levels of Doom 2. As a fan of H.P. Lovecraft, his influence is apparent in the Lovecraftian feel of the monsters for Quake, and he created Inferno, the third episode of the first Doom. He was forced to resign from id Software during the production of Quake 2 and most of his work was scrapped before the title was released. American McGee American McGee was a level designer for Doom 2, The Ultimate Doom, Quake, and Quake 2. He was asked to resign after the release of Quake 2, then moved to Electronic Arts where he gained industry notoriety with the development of his own game American McGee's Alice. After leaving Electronic Arts, he became an independent entrepreneur and game developer. McGee now heads independent game development house Spicy Horse in Shanghai, where he works on various projects. <laughs>